Aiming is probably the ultimate skill in a shooter game, as a player with perfect aim can seem almost unstoppable. Many players will train for hours on end in hopes of developing near-perfect superhuman aim, but others will take the easy way out. Aimbot is probably the most notorious video game cheat. You might have had the displeasure of facing a player with Aimbot in one of the many popular shooter titles. Or maybe you joined a public Team Fortress 2 lobby in the past 5 years. Regardless, we normally associate Aimbot with multiplayer competitive shooter games. But what about the single player shooter games? In modern day gaming, speedruns are some of the most impressive displays of skill, with aiming being one of those skills. However, you never really see a speedrunner cheat by using aimbot in their speedruns. And that's because single player games are predictable. In multiplayer shooter games, you have no idea where your enemy players are, so you have to rely on good reactions and flicks to guide your aim to the right spot. But in single player campaigns, with some rare exceptions, everything is always in the same place, so aiming can be quite trivial with just some small micro adjustments needed. But there is one exception to that, and it comes from a speedrun that most people rarely consider a shooter game. Puzzle and platformer are usually the words used to describe Valve's Portal series, as instead of using a gun to fire bullets and eliminate bad guys, you're using it to open portals and solve puzzles. At first glance, the game is not very aim intensive at all. The hardest parts are a few momentum puzzles that require you to shoot portals while airborne. However, when you're speedrunning, there are some glitches that require an absurd amount of aiming precision. Specifically, in the Source engine, there's something known as a seam shot. Due to some faulty collision calculations, sometimes there can be an unbelievably small gap between two walls. Visually, it looks like the walls are completely connected, but if a player stands in the right spot and a shot is lined up just right, there's enough space for a portal to pass through. The reason why this happens is quite complicated, and Kersihau made a whole 9 minute video explaining the physics engine witchcraft that makes this possible. But to sum it up quickly, complex shapes that connect to simple shapes create weird collision boundaries that, under certain conditions, allow for thin projectiles to travel through. For speedruns, this is very exploitable, because when a seam is present, we can bypass walls that normally prevent us from progressing or that keep us in bounds. For example, in Portal 1, you can shoot through a seam at the corner in the start of Chamber 4, which will land out of bounds right at the end of Chamber 5, allowing you to complete both chambers basically instantly. And this also works in Portal 2. In the level Incinerator, you can shoot through a seam at the corner of these two walls in the middle of the level that lands out of bounds right underneath the end of the puzzle. If you're playing challenge mode, going into this out of bounds portal will clip you into the flags and instantly complete the level. However, the hardest part of performing this glitch is the aiming precision. The gaps present in these seams are minuscule, so much so that when speedrunners perform seam shots, they cannot rely on visuals alone. Speedrunners usually use the CL Show Pause debug menu to line up their exact position and angle, sometimes down to the third or fourth decimal, in order to consistently find a seam. Because of how precise these seam shots are, speedrunners can spend quite a couple of seconds standing still and adjusting their aim to get the shot just right. This is obviously not that big of a deal, with how much time some of these seam shots save but speedrunners would always fantasize about instantly getting seam shots and saving those meaningless seconds that were just spent adjusting your aim. And here's where the desire for an aimbot comes in. So how exactly can you aimbot in Portal? Well, let's answer that question with a question. What's the smallest distance you can move your mouse where your computer will actually detect movement? Well, it's pretty complicated, and I'm a video game speedrunner, not an engineer. But the point I'm trying to make is, that at least when you play video games, we like to think of our mouse movement as a spectrum, where your mouse can be at any possible position on the screen, when in reality, it's more like a grid, where your mouse can only be at certain points at a given time. That's a little confusing, but I have the perfect way to explain it, and that's by using the in-game sensitivity. I'm sure you're familiar with the generic sensitivity slider, but if we want to get more precise, we can set our exact sensitivity value using the developer console. 
So for this example, let's say we set our sensitivity to a ludicrously high number, like 2000. Now at this value, you couldn't possibly play the game normally, as your view completely spazzes out. But if you try to move your mouse in as small increments as possible, you'll notice something more interesting. It's now very clear that your view sort of snaps between certain points, completely skipping the area in between. To even better emphasize this, if we set our sensitivity to something like 10,000, moving the mouse up at all will result in the player looking straight up, and moving the mouse down will result in the player looking straight down. There are only two possible vertical points your mouse can be at with a sensitivity this large. This shows the idea that your mouse movement is on a grid, where your sensitivity controls the distance between the points. This is something that normally doesn't matter, because if you play on a normal sensitivity, the distance between these points is so small that it basically seems continuous. But this is where Speedrunner's ingenuity comes in, because instead of lining up our aim between a ton of possible points with a normal sensitivity, we can manipulate our sensitivity so that our desired angle is one of our only possible points to aim at. This is the basis for the view snap technique that basically gives the player aimbot. Using some math, we can calculate extremely large and precise sensitivity values that will have our desired angle as a point on its grid. And since the value will be large, there will not be many possible points on the grid, allowing us to access it easily. And with quick access to precise angles, we can perform seam shots instantly with ease. In practice, speedrunners perform view snap by turning down their mouse DPI as low as possible, in order to have some kind of control over the extremely high mouse sensitivity. To give an example, I'll show you the first viable view snap that was found in Portal 1 Out of Bounds. In Chamber 6, speedrunners actually do two seam shots. The first one is lined up in the Chamber 5 elevator, which lets you shoot through the ceiling in Chamber 6 to get right under the ending elevator in Chamber 7. From here, we're able to activate the elevator, but we're not actually in the elevator, which is a problem, because if we stay in the bottom of the elevator shaft, we'll be stuck at the start of Chamber 8, and if we're anywhere else in the level, the game won't transition to the next level, effectively softlocking us. So we need to get to the top of the elevator shaft. And more crucially, we need to get there before the elevator finishes rising. So there's a time constraint here. Thankfully, we can do another seam shot in Chamber 6 to land a portal on a stray out of bounds wall, which we can then combine with some other glitches to get to the top of the elevator shaft. But the biggest problem with this strat is the time constraint, because we have to aim and shoot this second seam shot really fast. So fast, in fact, that runners would often be too slow and miss the elevator. So runners discovered a view snap for it. After triggering the elevator and re-entering chamber 6, you would approximately line yourself up with this line in the wall decal, set your sensitivity to 2912.017, look down one notch, then change your sensitivity to 8117.954, and then look left one notch. This will result in your aim being perfectly on the precise seam every time, and it would make the strat consistent enough to do for runs. Much later, speedrunners would start to apply the same technique to Portal 2. I actually made a video about the awesome strat that runners used to use in the level Crazy Box. But of course, speedrunners have now found a drastically different, faster route, which is just a seam shot into the final portion of the level. Fairly quickly, runners were able to find a view snap for this level. You could set your sensitivity to 1388.727, go 3 notches up, 1 notch down, then change your sensitivity to 4090.909, and then look 1 notch right. As long as you're aligned with the left side of the catwalk, you'll hit the seam every time. In fact, Portal 2 speedrunners started finding applications of view snap in a ton of places. In the level incinerator, there was a view snap to shoot right to the end after getting the portal gun. And in some levels with these industrial doors, there's something known as a pancake shot, where you can shoot through a super small hole through the top of the door. It's technically a different exploit from seam shots, but in terms of execution, they're more or less identical. In the turret factory level, 
runners found a view snap set up to do a pancake shot at the start of the level, which saved over a second. And around this time is when we take a step back, because this robotic-like mouse movement is really silly. Should this even be allowed? Well, many speedrunners thought that, and the Portal 2 Challenge Mode community moderators implemented a view snap ban, which didn't allow you to play with a sensitivity above 20 which was the highest value you could set with the sensitivity slider. But of course, that wouldn't stop speedrunners, who started doing something called mini view snap, where they would raise their sensitivity to a specific value that's as high as possible without going over 20, and then adjust their DPI so the mouse sensitivity feels normal. You still had to aim, but it made the seam shots a lot easier to get. Kind of like an aim assist, since there were less possible points to aim at. For about a month, the Crazy Box world record used the sensitivity 19.97561, which I just find comical. After further consideration, the moderator team reversed this soft ban, and now view snaps are fully allowed again. As much as some people were against this decision, it was hard to arbitrarily police something as simple as mouse sensitivity, so it was a tough thing to properly ban. But ViewSnap has given us a lot of cool runs, like the first sub-26 minute run in co-op all main courses by Betsruner and AJ, which was made possible by an 8 second time save in Industrial Fan, where a ViewSnap setup lets players shoot a seam to get into the office section without disabling the giant fan. It also allowed me, yes me, the narrator, to get the Portal 2 world record, as my run is the first world record run to use the view snap technique in Crazy Box, which saves a couple of seconds. And what's even more interesting is that view snap could possibly affect more than just speedrunning, as seam shots are possible in the Source Engine multiplayer shooter games like Team Fortress 2 and Counter Strike Global Offensive. And although these games cap mouse sensitivity at 1000, you could still technically perform view snaps. In fact, professional CSGO player Rops actually independently discovered ViewSnap about a year and a half later than speedrunners in order to consistently perform precise smoke grenade lineups. However, players do not actively use ViewSnap in matches. Regardless though, it's always amazing how you can give speedrunners something as simple as an option to change your mouse sensitivity and they can fundamentally change the way aiming works. Who knows what speedrunners will break next? Thanks for watching.